Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. Playing is an integral part of childhood, but what about giving it an academic tweak? Many researchers believe that during a child's early years, play can help develop cognitive skills, laying a strong foundation for a lifetime of learning. In this report, we go to China, where traditional teaching methods and rote learning have characterized school life for a long time. But we are going to meet a woman who has developed a completely new approach that puts play at the heart of early childhood education. It's almost 9 a.m. in Anji, and class is about to start. But in this kindergarten, children won't sit in front of a blackboard. They spend their mornings outdoors. After a warm-up, it's time to build. We are building a shop. A coffee shop to sell tea, pudding and cakes. The teacher told us to build whatever we want the way we want. In Angie Play, children from three to six choose how they play and with whom. They can do things other preschools won't allow, like painting real cars. The concept, called True Play, was found by Cheng Shui Xing 15 years ago. Traditionally, in Chinese education, teachers teach and students listen. Now we've given the kids the right to play. They're free to move from indoors to outdoors. Our children are happy, and I think happiness is very important in life. They can also focus on a task. They need it during the games. It's a valuable asset for their future studies. In the playground, teachers film every child during the activities. They're specially trained to observe the kids and learn about their behavior. Every day, playtime ends with a debrief in class. They want to explain what they're doing, and they do so with confidence, because it's something they've experienced. It's also something which develops their language skills. What's more, during the construction process, they encounter problems, like mathematical problems. The preschool stresses the importance of autonomy. Children organize the lunch area on their own and help themselves with food. Afterwards, it's nap time. Soft music helps them relax, and in 10 minutes, all is quiet in a school of 500 pupils. The Angie Play concept is attracting lots of attention across China and even in the United States. This year I went to San Francisco, Boston and Madison. In Madison there's a kindergarten for disadvantaged people, mostly Afro-Americans. They really want to implement Angie Play in their school. But in the beginning, Mrs Chen had a tough time convincing Chinese parents they are afraid of the dirt and the risks. It took them a while to realize the benefits of learning while playing, especially for a generation of single children. My son has no choice but to play with other kids, to cooperate with them in order to finish the construction. He's bad-sempered, even violent sometimes. Thanks to the games, gradually his behavior has improved. Fourteen thousand children are taking part in the Anji Play curriculum in China's Zhejiang province. According to the organization, Anji Play is said to become part of China's national kindergarten standards. Can you prepare your child for university studies from a very young age? Does it make sense to teach Shakespeare or chess to a four-year-old? If all this sounds strange to you, then you might be surprised by our next report from the U.S. In New York, the city that never sleeps, some parents have decided to accelerate their children's education. Juliet has high hopes for her son, Jonas, and she's betting this special school in uptown Manhattan will make her dreams come true one day. Jonas is only four years old, but Juliet has a clear view of his future. 
I expect that my son will go on to college and to a you know a successful not necessarily Harvard or Yale but whatever university he, he wants to and that's right for him but I absolutely has have aspirations for him to pursue higher education and to use this education is the foundation for that education. Juliet's confidence in the future is based on the guarantee offered by the Goddard School, which promises that all its pupils will go to the best U.S. universities. Here, every single play has an educational goal. Oh, I don't understand why the families are fighting all the time. I'm too busy being in love. These children are discovering Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Normally in the US, students first study the work when they're 14, and not with glove puppets. But here, there's a higher purpose. You know, there's this cliche of going to high school and going to university and, and hearing, oh, we're going to learn about Shakespeare, and the students going, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't like Shakespeare, even though they've never, you know, never read it. People who've never read or seen Shakespeare still have an aversion to it. But by making this positive association so early, um, you know, they'll remember, oh, Shakespeare, I know that name, and I remember having a really good time about it. And, you know, the stories that we're telling are not adaptations, they're, they're distillations. They're, they're still the same story, and they still have Shakespeare's text in them. And the technique also works well with chess. In New York, Tyler Schwartz's Chess at Three organization is very well known. He often comes to the Goddard School. His promise to the families is to boost the capacities of children in mathematics and logic. You can do that. Remember, you can move straight, but you know if you go here? Okay, what are you going to do now? Boomy, yep, and leave your king here. Hold on, try that one. The children's literacy goes up between 10 and 15 percent because they're coming across these stories that they've never heard something so complex before. So uh, with Chess at Three you get the benefits of playing chess and having your memory get better, having your calculation get better, having your executive function get better, but with our stories their literacy also gets better as well. There's a high price to pay though for all these methods. Goddard School costs around twenty thousand dollars per year. But for parents, it's a vital investment they hope will pay off in the future. Are you a teacher or a parent? How do you think play is important for a child's education and development? We always love hearing your thoughts on social media, so keep them coming. Goodbye for now. Learning World, in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.